welcome to the Impact on the Ground podcast series. I'm Tiia Sammalahti, CEO of whatimpact.com, a tech for good company with the mission to become the LinkedIn of CSR. In this podcast series, we'll dig deeper into what it takes to make an impactful change in our society. I'll give a voice to charities, social enterprises, companies, grant makers, individuals and government officials who all have one thing in common. They are keen to make a difference. We dive into practical solutions and observe the dynamics of those who have resources to give and those working with the beneficiaries on the ground. Let's start making an impact together. So, hello, Martine uh, from uh, Kids uh, Run Free, nowadays called Marathon Kids UK. We've been working with Martine for years, first with What Charity and now with What Impact. And I definitely wanted to invite her to discuss uh, and, and hear more about her fantastic charity. Uh, which is uh, dedicated to increase physical, mental and social well-being through their program. Welcome, Martine. Hi, Tia. Very nice to see you. Thank you very much for inviting me today. Yeah, and good, good to get the face to the name. Yeah, yes. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, after all these years and also COVID. Yeah. So uh, you've been running uh, Kids Run Free, uh, nowadays labeled and traded uh, as Mar Marathon Kids UK for 10 years. Tell us about how all started and why you set this organization up. Okay. Um, so I started off with running a running organization for adults, um, which is called Raceways. And I thoroughly enjoyed seeing people being physically active, the, the enjoyment of, of people doing their hobby, doing what they enjoy doing. But what struck me most is that it was okay for the parents to run around, <laughs> but it was not good for the children to run around. So what happened most of the cases, they would put the children in a push chair and then the partner of the person who would run would push the child around or hold them by the hand and they couldn't actually get out. And I thought, that's just so wrong. I like, just can't continue like this. So then I spoke with my business partner, Catherine O'Carroll, and I said, can we, can we do something for the children? So we then decided to organize um, running races for the children by the side, which was not a done thing at that moment in time. 10 years ago, they didn't exist. Children races just did not exist. Um, and we, we started off saying to everybody who would race, would you like your child to race as well? And most of the answers would be, my child doesn't like running, my child can't run, or my child runs away when I let them go. And I thought, and for all those three reasons, you should give your child your opportunity to run and instead you're actually tying them up in a push chair and that is then it um, and then we thought well we need to pull this separate out of our running environment and do it totally different because clearly we're not having an impact on the children where we want to make an impact um, and that's when kids from free was born the charity was born so we started off with doing um, weekly fun runs for children in the park. Um, and again, very, very hard at the beginning to get parents to actually get the children there. We would have to go to the school. First of all, we would hand out the leaflets to the parents and the parents would again say, my child doesn't like running, my child runs away, my child can't run. And, and we just felt, it's always the parent talking on behalf of the child. It's never actually the child talking for themselves. Yes, mum, I do actually like running. And yes, I can run, but you just don't let me or dad. Um, so we then changed tack. And rather than giving the leaflets to the adults, we gave the leaflets to the children. And that's when it started growing. Look, mum, I can go running here. Shall we go? Still, you need the parent, but we, we kind of realized we have to really talk to the children because they're the ones that need to then tell the parents they really would like to go. Because otherwise the parent says, I've worked all week. I'm too tired. If I don't do it for myself, I'm not going to go for my child. Which was 
and still is the hardest thing. The, bar the parents are the biggest barrier in most cases. And that's when we went into schools to take that parent barrier out basically and say schools will help you to get your kids fitter and implemented that running, same running program as what you do in the park, exactly the same, but then putting it into the schools, which is where we currently still are. So uh, how do you uh, fund this? I mean, um, you, you have a concept and uh, then you offer it to the schools. Is it free or do you charge schools for this? Yeah, the basic package for the schools is for free. So a school can register online and then they can simply start running and they can update the, the running online. Um, where we enhance and, and make the program better and easier for the school is that they can print out a QR code per child. It can be laminated and then whenever they do their laps when they run, instead of collecting an elastic band, they actually scan it. And the amount of times they scan times the distance of the course will then add up to the total distance. Okay. And so the free part is you can register for free, you can start running for free, but as soon as you want the elastic bands, you want the scanning, um done by us prepared by us you would like us to come into the school to do um do an basically a starting day and a celebration day um do you want medals all that kind of stuff so the extra additives that's what we sell yeah. and that then gives us money back and next to that we of course still have the raceways part of the of the charity which still donates to kids from free all profits in a year um, so actually you are saying that uh, adults running for their adult program when they are participating in your runs and pay they are actually supporting kids yes yeah time. exactly okay cool so doing the running for the children the adults yeah. run for the children um and in the parks that's that's exactly the same um but in the parks, how it works there is that every park uh, manager would either ask the parents for the medals or they would raise money themselves in one way or another. We leave that free to the um, uh, through the Marathon Kids director to actually sort it out. So um, about your size, I, I checked on what impact, since you have a wonderful profile on our platform, that your turnover is approximately 300,000 and you employ four people, but you have hundreds of volunteers. What do these volunteers do and how can anyone as an individual or company employee volunteer with you? Okay, um, it's a nice question actually, yeah. So we. The most important part of us is, is the volunteering, of course. Um, and these volunteers are race directors in the parks. They are volunteers in the parks. They volunteer in the office. Um, they volunteer in schools. So we have per park location, we have possibly about eight, nine volunteers. And then, of course, on top of that, um, you, you have them in the school. So you will have parents that want to help um, and want to volunteer. And you have um, teachers that do it outside their normal working time. Um, businesses, how they can help in many ways. So we could, what we tend to do when we work with organizations, we ask them what they really would like. What is it you're looking for? Um, if they're looking for a volunteering program, then we would look at setting up a um, marathon kids in the park around their area and we help them to run it um, or sometimes they give time for in the office which is really valuable as well so if you have for example lawyers that want to do some free hours um, in a year then we are always super grateful to receive that so it very much depends on what the organization have has and what they want to offer is but I very much believe that if you love the concept, if you love what we do, we will make the relationship work. But to me, it's always a give and take. It is always creating what works. I'm very reluctant to have set packages. I yeah. don't believe in set packages. Every organization is different and every, um, every need is different. 
and we will answer to that need. Yeah, so. I, I think you have, like you said, that it's give and take that, you know, you have also a lot, lot to give, uh, of course, like uh, meaningful, like uh, even team or group volunteering running these kind of events uh, locally would not only benefit that volunteer, it would be benefiting probably their children, their yeah. whole community. So it, it would be kind of a favor that they would be doing to the whole community and uh, they could probably collaborate with other charities as well who, who might be working with also children who are not so encouraged uh, by their families to participate and, and there could be in encouragement to uh, maybe include underprivileged children to the program. But also then as a, if I'm thinking about in a corporate perspective, this could be even a human resources matter in a company because when the children move and they are active, sometimes we parents have to move too, <laughs> you know, and be, become active. So it, it is uh, this health uh, benefit that also the employees would be getting and then spreading it around. So uh, I would see this as a, almost like a human resources a product that they could be applying to the company uh, and, yeah. and therefore raise the well-being of the company employees at the same time supporting this kind of a good cause. So, so uh, what, we, what we would do as well in, in that respect, very often um, organizations like to do a, um, a charity run. They want to organize a charity run, but organizing an event is very different from organizing a business if that's not what you're doing. So we would offer that out for raceways to do it, which of course then on its turn supports marathon kids. Yeah, yeah. So you can do this to a big adult event. Yes. Yeah. So um, uh, just uh, about your impact. I mean, you, you are helping children. Obviously, everybody understands that if children move and they have fun, you know, they are happy, healthy children. Uh, but uh, kind of how do you measure your kind of a difference that you are making? What kind of, you know, research or surveys or how can you measure your impact? Because the impact could be quite long term, could it? Yes. If you think about your, if you create a, uh, like a jogging or running habit or any exercise habit when you're a kid, you're more likely to do it when you're adult. And so, that's our key thing. That's how we indeed do things. Um, so we very much look at our, long-term but also short-term impact um it's broad our measurement and evaluation is really really broad so we um first of all we have a data measurement so our tracking system knows exactly how far every single child runs every single time they run mm -hmm. um we can't say we can't draw a conclusion from the how far they are running every single session because the sessions are not always the same length and also it's not necessarily a great thing to measure because um, as children go through their puberty um, or start their puberty and their or and their body develops before that even so around the age five six and um, they go through um, a real big change in their in their body and that means they might not always perform the same so participation is the absolute most important thing so from in schools from the um from the number of children that we are offering it to 97 percent of them participate in 87 percent of the runners that have been made available to them so it shows that the participation, so if, for example, 10 runs have been made available to them, then they will take part in 9.7 of those. And 87% of those children um, are, are doing that in the multiple times. So yeah. it, it, it continues. So it's the, the number of um, runs they take part in, as well as the people that take part, that's the two different things that we, that we measure. Um, then at the beginning of the school year, um, as well as the end of the school year, we measure impact by having um, in-depth interviews 
Yeah. So we ask schools if we can talk to the children, we can talk to the teachers, because it has an enormous influence on the teachers as well. If the program is run well, then teachers will take part, also register how far they're going. Um, and that competition is only ever really positive. Um, and then we, so we have um, the, the, the interviews and then also we send out questionnaires. Yeah. So we do it, the pure data, the in-depth focused interviews, and then the kind of quantitative ABC data yeah. as well. So it's, it's very broad to us. We, we started off doing research with Marathon, with um, Loughborough University, um, which is the, the, the base of that, inter of that research was to get to understand um, why children take part, how we can reduce the barriers and how we can increase the facilitators. So we can make sure that the participation and the attendance are both really high because we know that every child that does take part will improve their physical <laughs> well-being. That's not a question anymore. That's been proven. Yeah. yeah. Thousands of years. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to prove it anymore. What we need to prove is who is giving that impact? Yeah. How much impact are we giving? How much are people actually taking care? It's fantastic to have a program that's really beautiful, but if nobody takes part, then yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, now? yeah. So that is a case that you know you have to, of course, you know, in in theory you can you can paint a nice picture, but but then it's a numbers game and like you said, attendance game. And also yeah. then how long people stick with it, because then it starts to have really long term impact on, on people's you know, health and so on. And then we very recently had um, another research done into our parks to understand what the impact is on the volunteers, the parents and the children in the parks. Um, and that's really to understand return on investments in, in that respect. So what for every pound spent what do we get back so for every pound that we spent we spent we get two pounds 79 back in health that the government doesn't need to spend because of what we have done and that is yeah. very much to do with mental and physical yeah so so you were combining this uh, like a monetary value yes and this more qualitative data Yes, because of course, there are these academic journals who have proven the physical and mental health aspects because uh, like fitness in general is been, has been researched quite a bit, but then you have all this qualitative data and quantitative uh, from your, you know, kind of from your participants and then addition, then monetary value. So you are actually quite advanced, I have to say, in terms of reporting on social impact uh, comparison to the size of your organization so congratulations <laughs> thank you, thank yeah. you. To, me, that, that, to me that's always really important in anything I do I think it's really important to measure and understand what it is because mm. otherwise you just well I'm not I'm not even though I have founded it I'm not doing it for myself I'm doing it to achieve something yeah. But if I'm not measuring what I'm achieving, then how do I know I'm achieved? And I just live in my little own world. Yes. Which, yeah, which definitely. And also, I guess every program, uh, whatever it is, you know, needs to improve. And there are things that you can do better and even yes. enhance the in impact. Is there something that you have learned tr uh, from these uh, surveys or discussions or any, any numbers that you have then actually changed? Yeah, so before we didn't have, for the schools, we didn't have a, um, um, a measurement that was easier for schools to do. So we didn't have the barcodes, um, so we couldn't do any scanning. It was literally only by collecting elastic bands and the schools struggled to, even though, even though the impact shows that if a school goes with elastic bands and works with a leadership scheme that we work with the children because really the program is run by children shouldn't have to be run by the adults because it's all made for a child to to take the data to input the data to present the data it's it's literally the whole the whole program is built to be run by by peers 
by peer students. Um, but the kind of trust that most schools have and that most schools can deal with shows that as a result, children are not running as much because they basically can't facilitate that, that leadership skills that we are putting in. So, yeah. she, so we, um, that's why we started doing the barcoding. Um, in the parks, it's very much in supporting with the feedback that we had is that it's very hard for the volunteers to um, to give that commitment for every week. So we have supported them in building bigger networks um, and giving the volunteers more so we they feel more comfortable at yeah. doing it. So we have a much broader training schedule for the volunteers. And if they want to do extra leadership skills, they can ask us and we put them through these through these skills. So they have, we have a set amount of courses that we ask them to do. And then on top of that, they can ask for more courses if they want to. Yeah. Um, communication was something that was really difficult. Um, if we have a problem as a race director in the parks or as a teacher, they tend to, teachers tend to work at night because during school time, there is no time to do anything else. Yeah. So if they want to do something like marathon kids, they tend to deal with that at night. So we have communication platforms whereby we communicate with them when they need it rather than yeah. when we do it, which is generally in the evenings at night. Yes. And we connected all the teachers together. So one teacher can, and also the race directors, we connected those together as well. So one teacher or race director can put something on the communication platform. And then you have many people answering, not just yeah. us, many people answering. Yeah, so it's like a community that you're building there and yeah. you, know, you belong to this kind and of a nice, you know, committed group. Yeah, of exactly. And, and those things we have, all those things have been implemented over the last one and a half year. Yeah. But that is what we continuously do. We do not stop improving. That's why we ask, what do you like? What do you not like? How yeah. can we get better? And we want continuous feedback to, to become better than anybody else out there so how many uh kids have participated in your program in 10 years oh that's a mean question that should over 250,000 over 250,000 um the year before covid we had 84,000 in one year yeah um so that's that reach is really, really big. And then through COVID, it went down massively. Of course. And this year, it seems to be really starting to blossom again. Yeah. Um, and I think most likely this year, we will beat that. Okay. Hey, this is very interesting. And I, I hope that uh, both, of course, individual enthusiasts of, of running and, and keeping fit uh, mentally and, and physically hear this, but also companies who, who could be uh, supporting you and also taking your program under their wings and offer it for their employees mm -hmm. to kind of take further. Uh, because um, it is, of course, great if, if well, where companies can, you know, build teams to run things and, you know, support each other and then spread the whole impact through their own organization to the families and their kids. So that would be very, very, I think, beneficial program for any company to take on. And so, we are uh, countrywide. We are yeah, countrywide. Yeah, that, and that's the other good thing that, you know, it's uh, you wherever you are in the UK, you can uh, participate. So, uh, Martine, uh, where can you be reached if somebody wants to reach out? Are you on LinkedIn? I am on LinkedIn, but I'm not a fantastic social media person. If somebody wants to know, hey, I'm going to contact Martine exactly now, what do they do? They can probably best by email. It's okay. um, M-A-R-T-I-N-E. Remember the E rather than the A. Um, at marathonkids.co.uk. Um, that's easiest. Alternatively, you can give me a phone call. I'm probably better at phone calls, and it's faster. And it's zero double seven double one three seven two seven nine five. Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's good. 
And uh, yeah, I, I wish you all the success in the future. I mean, uh, amazing autumn coming up and the whole next year, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure that you will get 200 kids a year running because people are so excited to get out there now and do everything that we couldn't do for so long. And yeah, so- all Even the a thousand kids a year. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah. So we're now at 84,000, so yeah. that's- but I, I'm a big believer, yeah. And Thank also, you know, you know, Marathon uh, Kids UK profile can be found on whatimpact.com and you can see all the resources they need, contact details and all, all kind of other aspects of the charity for due diligence. So, yeah. And please make sure you put UK behind it because um, if you go to just Marathon Kids, it will take you to the US, who is our partner organization. But it's not the same organization, so it has to be Marathon Kids UK. Follow <laughs> okay, totally me on LinkedIn. I will keep yeah. an extra lookout on LinkedIn. I'm on there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, and see you maybe live soon. That'll be wonderful. Thank you so much, Tia. Great to meet Bye. you. Great to meet you. So, thank you for tuning into What Impact on the Crown podcast. It's been great to have you with us. I'm Tia Sammalahti, CEO of whatimpact.com, a tech for good company with the mission to become the LinkedIn of CSR. Whether you are a company with resources to give or a charity or social enterprise looking for resources to make an impact, check out our platform and start your free trial now. Let's make a difference together.